you have to understand here that what you're, what you're about to bite off is really, really, really hard. It's really hard. There's, I, I cannot tell you how hard it is, okay? Because you really need to do the work. Uh, there's, no, there's no getting around certain ends of it. You need to know the story inside and out. You need to know the characters inside and out. You need to know the through line of the story inside and out, every element of it inside and out. But more than that, it has to live inside you. If you look at <clears throat> some of the past uh, Academy Award winners, if you look at the film Moonlight, has everyone here seen Moonlight? And the things that the writers go through to get these stories up on the screen, the things that they live through to get these stories up on the screen, it is, it is a very big body of work. But let's talk a little bit about, about this. OK, so the first thing you need to do is you're going to write in free verse. Say again? Oh, here we go again. How's that? We, there we go. OK. You're going to free verse your story. So what do I mean by that? You're going to write the whole thing out, beginning, middle, and end, in free verse form. Don't worry about grammar. Nobody's going to read these pages but you. Okay, They're for you. They're for no one else. You're going to free verse the whole thing, beginning, middle, end, in just a regular literary form. You're going to write it out. Write the whole thing out. After you've done that, you're going to put it down for at least a few days. Uh, some people like to write every day. I don't. I mean, I do and I don't. I'll walk around with this, and if something hits me, I, I, I get it down. And then when I sit down to write, it's like it's time to write. But I don't have the schedule where I'm going to write an hour and a half every day. I don't do that. You're going to free verse your story. You're going to do a rewrite of your free verse. You're trying to look at where it's weak. How does it end? And when we talk a little bit more about structure, I think it's going to help you tremendously in how to get that story down. OK, so then you're going to rewrite. Do this as many times as you need to to come up with something that works, something that you think works as a story and is compelling. And OK, well, I, I'm on board with this, and there's no boring parts. There's nothing in there that's making me go to sleep in the second act, which is where all screenplays fall apart. Second act is the toughest. They call it second act hell. OK, it's the toughest part. A lot of times you'll get a great idea, and you know what the ending is going to be, and you know where they're going to start. But then you've got this big problem of this 60-page chunk in the middle of the screenplay. Oh, what do we do here? Oh, we'll send them to Kmart or Walmart, and we'll have them witness a robbery there, and then he'll go home, and his, his wife will be cheating on him. And, and that's going to affect him. But he'll get over that, and then we'll get back to this part. Because that's just stilted, because you don't, have, you don't have enough to fill your second act up. So that means your story is not what? The structure is not all the way there yet. Was there a question there? Say again, please. Well, yeah, let me be a little more specific there. When I say free verse, you want to write your entire story out as if you were writing, well, let me just put it this way. Is everyone here familiar with a form of writing called a novella? Usually about 100 pages long. The great thing about novellas is that they, they translate well to screenplay length. So you might write your story out in free verse in your own words, and it might be 80 or 100 pages. And that's cool. It can be 500 pages right now, as long as you know that you're going to get this down to 120 pages. OK, so you're going to free verse everything out. You're going to get to a point where you're comfortable with it. Does everybody have this? We're going to move on? OK. OK, from there, we're going to get to the treatment. Yeah, absolutely. Let me give you a little insight. So excuse me. Are we good? Yeah, so it's free verse, character history, treatment, beat sheet, 
screenplay. That's the last thing you're going to write is the screenplay. You're going to do all of this work. You're going to do all this work first. I'm going to go over each one. So we've talked about the free verse. You're going to get it as tight as you can get it. Okay? You're going to get your story as tight as you can. Less is always more. Less is more. After you're satisfied with that, you're going to write something called a character history for each of the main three characters. Okay? There's usually an antagonist, a protagonist, and then a, a lead support or two lead supports. Okay? We need to know everything about them from the day that they're born to the day before the action in your story begins. You need to know them inside and out. I'm going to explain why you need to know these things. Then you're going to write character monologues. So that would be a monologue in the voice of each of those lead characters. It could be three lead characters or two leads and two supports. If they appear, if they appear on more than <coughs> five pages of your screenplay, they need to have a character history and a character monologue. Because what? You have to know them inside and out. You have to know how they speak. Uh, you have to know the, the rhythm of their speech, the, the uh, region of the country that they're from, and you should write that document in the voice of that character. Um, there's a terrific screenwriter that lives close by, we're friends, his name is Jeffrey Fletcher. He wrote, um, adapted actually, a movie called Precious, won Oscar for the uh, best, uh, best adapted screenplay a few years ago, five or six years ago. And in that screenplay, when the lead character speaks, it's written out phonetically, just as that character spoke. That's OK. And that's what you need to do in your character monologue. And it has to be something that's personal to that character, something that they feel very deeply about. I usually write a monologue about a relative, the mother, how they feel about their mother, how they feel about uh, a certain injury that happened to them in their life. But you need to know them. Why do you want to write this now? Because you don't want to be stuck when you're writing your screenplay thinking, oh, well, what's the character going to say in this, in this moment? Because if you don't take this step, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be sitting there stumping, oh, well, what would they say? And then you're into that trap of you're writing your story as you're writing your screenplay. So you want to make sure you know what their voice is, and you know what their heart is, and you know what their mind is, you know what their psyche is, you know what their injury is. So you want to write these character histories. This is what has happened to them, and the character monologues. That's how they feel about it. You want to make sure that you have that. So you're going to write all of that out. So you don't necessarily mean the draft of the monologue that will instance You might borrow parts of it, but it, yes, it, it, the question is, uh, you're not drafting a monologue that's going to appear in the movie. Uh, it may or it may not. The point is that, as the writer, you are familiarizing yourself. It's almost like you're interviewing them for a job. You're getting to know who they are, what they sound like, what they think, what they feel how they speak. Because if you get to your screenplay and you have to write their dialogue, you're going to need to know all of that stuff. Yes? Interesting question. You're, you're, because this is coming from you, is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, it's coming from you, but when you're writing about a character that is not you, you need to step outside of yourself and you need to step into the shoes of that character. So. Um, for instance, I, I just finished something that we're hoping to start. Well, we're not hoping to start. We're going to start in August. And um, two of the characters are African American. One of them is an aspiring ballet dancer who grew up in Harlem, New York. So I had to, I had to kind of step in that. And that was an exploration process for me. OK, that's something completely outside of, of, of my experience. But in order for the film to be effective, I had to learn as much about that as I possibly could. You know, trips to New York, the whole thing. Research. That is what begins to happen. They start talking to you. That sounds a little weird, but that's what happens once you get in touch with their, you know, their rhythm and their history and their cadence of speech and all of that stuff. Okay, so yeah, it's coming from you. But it's you experiencing someone else's life 
through this character. Okay, and this is what you're trying to do for your audience. You're trying to transport them to some place that's what? Outside of the realm of their experience. So you really have to know about that. So after that, we go to a treatment. Now, does everybody have all of this? Because I want to write some things about the treatment. Okay, does everyone have this? So your treatment needs to be proportionate to your screenplay length. So you've got, and this is not absolute. Again, these are principles. But if your screenplay is three acts, 30 pages, 60 pages, 30 pages, your treatment should be proportionate to the screenplay. So if your treatment is 12 pages in length, it doesn't have to be. It can be longer. It depends on what's going on in the development process. Three pages is act one. Six pages for act two. And then three pages for act three. So the last paragraph of the third page should be your threshold crossing, which I'm going to get into right after this, from act one to act two. The last paragraph of that would be page nine would be your second plot point where we're doing what? We're headed toward the solution to the conflict. Okay, and then the last three pages is the last part of your screenplay. Okay, the act three, the solution to the conflict. The end of the movie and the solution to the conflict are two different things. The end of the conflict in Rocky is when the bell rings and he's made it. That's the end of the conflict. That's the solution to the story. The end of the movie is when Adrian gets in the ring and declares her love. That's the end of the movie. It's two different things. <coughs> I wanted to make that disti distinction. So after you've done this, does everyone have this? After you've got this down, you're going to write something called a beat sheet. So you've got, let me see if I have an example here for you. I think I do. So here is. something I've just completed called, this is the treatment. It starts with a little intro, a little note for the producer, screenwriter's note, I'll just read it to you. The story in its original form was written as a period piece as the economies of Hollywood as well as independent production have changed significantly. Over the course of the years, the story has since been rewritten and is set in the present day. However, should we find the ability and resources to produce the film in its original form, the locations which have already been secured, see production package, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the opening description is, when the worlds of Cameron O'Neill and Jasmine Sims collide, the unexpected results bring wondrous change to each of them and to all who surround them. Their separate places, each filled with enchanting beauty, wonder, and hope, are also filled with agonizing pain, loss, and unforeseen tragedy. After our two lead characters, from opposite sides of the tracks meet and fall in love, can they find their way over the walls that separate their two worlds and defeat their painful past and present day lives? Or will the vindictive forces of hatred, alienation, and racism conspire to keep them apart? It all begins with the families in the summer of 71, there were three of them. So that's your opening statement in your treatment, but this is tailored toward a producer. But that last paragraph I wrote is an elongated version of something that you need to know, and it's called a log line. It's very important to know. And you should know this before you go into any situation where you're presenting your work to someone who might say yes to it, or you're going into a pitch meeting. You need to know your log line. Your log line is what the film is in 25 words or less. That's not 25 words or less, but that was geared toward a specific producer who asked me for this document. So I gave it to him. But it's what the picture is in 25 words or less. So if it's Rocky, a down and out club fighter from Philadelphia receives a chance for love and redemption when he's offered the opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. That's the log line for Rocky. Okay? You can go down the list, and if you look in, I don't know, what would it be, Rotten Tomatoes or, I used to say TV Guide, but TV Guide knows it doesn't exist anymore. You can tell how old I am. But 
the little descriptions that you see or when you're changing the channels on your cable television, you see that little description of what the movie is. That's the log line. That's something that you need to know. You might walk into an elevator and the producer's there, what's your log line? Oh, it's boom. Oh yeah, I want to hear more. Okay, off we go. But you need to know that. So we know this and then we've got the treatment which produces what we call a beat sheet. So let's find a good, a good part here. From this document, these are your characters. So here's the, the first shot of the movie. A woman's beautiful manicured hand lifts the needle of a record player and places it onto a moving album. Classical music begins. That's the music which you should never do, but because we're further along in the process, the producer asked for it, so it's okay. Then we've got these shots. The foot of a middle-aged woman is wrapped in ballet slippers. The fist of a teenage boy as it is wrapped in a set of boxing hand wraps. Does everyone know what those are? Before you get in the boxing ring, you wrap up your hands. The foot of an African-American woman is wrapped in ballet slippers. The fist of an African-American man is also wrapped in a set of boxing hand wraps. So we're setting up these two worlds that are going to do what? They're going to collide. We just don't know how yet. So from your treatment, you're writing beats. So beat number one would be close-up of record. And because I've written it, I don't know what that is, and I don't need to go any further. You're going to write beats. They should be no more than seven words in length. From these beats, you're going to start writing what? Your screenplay. Number two, close-ups of fists, feet. I know what that shot is. We go right down the line. Uh, let me just pick something out here. Open window, boxing, and ballet. So you'll see how this works. Now, less is always more. I'm going to explain why right now. You want to keep your beats, the description of your beats, as short and as compact as possible. Because the more you write in this part of the process, the harder it's going to be to render these things into screenplay nomenclature, into a screenplay. Because they're going to go on and they grow like weeds exponentially. So you want to keep the descriptions of these beats very, very compact and very, very short. So here's what I've just put down. Number three, open window, boxing, ballet. We begin on a large open window. Its white linen curtains gently blow inward towards the large bedroom. This is the treatment. From the treatment, I'm writing beats. From the beats, I'm writing the screenplay. I'll go on. Outside, it's magic hour, which is sunset. And beautiful trees gently blow against an orange and purple sky. Classical music fills the air, but another sound, which faintly builds, is also heard. From what must be a lawn well below the window, the unmistakable sounds of two men boxing builds. As we move back from the window slowly and discover the sights of an opulent bedroom, more sounds build that of a person moving around a floor. The three sounds merge as if making love as we discover the photo on a dresser of a young Elizabeth, who is our supporting lady actor, female actor, a ballerina on stage at the end of a performance on a regal European stage, taking in the adoration of the crowd which is on its feet. We move to another photo of Vincent and Elizabeth, the newlyweds, in the lobby of a New York hotel is not a happy wedding photo. Vincent appears happier, Elizabeth almost unhappy, and she wears a weak smile. So all of this has to be transferred to what? Screenplay nomenclature as what? Descriptions on a page. So what happens then? We keep writing all of these beats. So you see beat number three there is open window boxing ballet. So that is what? A beat is a unit of dramatic action. <coughs> That's all it is. A beat is just a fancy name for a unit of dramatic action. So you want to have all of these units of dramatic action 
in order and complete. You don't want to leave anything out that you want in the movie. So they have to be in your beat sheet. OK, so you've gone through all of these. You've, you've done all of this work. You've written out your story. You've written out your character histories and monologues. You've written out your uh, treatment. You've written out your beat sheet. By the time you've done your beats, you should have at least 80 of them for a feature length screenplay. You want to keep them very short, very compact. Don't go over seven words. Don't go over seven or eight words for any given beat. If you're writing two sentences in your beat sheet, <coughs> try to think of another way to go in or break it up into two separate beats. You want to keep it organized. So now, after you've done this, guess what time it is? It's time to write your screenplay. Now, another thing, another thing about this first run through of your first draft of your first screenplay here, if you come in at too many pages, you know, 140 pages, which is what a first draft will usually come in at, thereabouts, don't panic because you're going to cut down. And there are things I'm going to show you in the second half of this morning. Where are we now with time? Oh, we're right about there now. There are things that you're going to do that are going to help you economize and help you cut down things that don't belong there and scenes that don't belong there and help you get your pages and help you get your scenes to where you need them to be. But when you sit down to write your screenplay, and again, I, I'm just telling you what, what, what has worked for me. There's no absolute way, but you don't want to drag it out over too long of a period of time. You, know, you don't want to take a month to write your screenplay. It's really hard to work like that. I think that energy is extremely important when you're writing your screenplay. You, know, you want to get the train moving and keep it moving, keep the momentum going. I don't necessarily recommend you write it the way that I like to do it, which is I lock myself in a room for four days and I don't come out till it's done. I get very little sleep. It's a miserable scene. My fiance comes in and out very infrequently. I, I say, you know, stay away. It's, it's, like, it's like serious man cave stuff, if I could say that. But, uh, but that's just how I do it. And I don't think it's necessarily the way that you should do it. But I find that if I don't do it that way, it's really hard for me to keep that energy moving. And you, know, you put it down, you, 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 you move away from it, and then a couple of days later, you come back to it. And oh, where was I? You know, I like to spend as uh, little time away from it as possible once I get to the screenplay stage, where I'm sitting there and I'm writing my screenplay. Okay? But you want to try and get it, again, just my advice, you want to try and get it all down um, in as short a period of time as possible. Sometimes it'll take a week. Sometimes it'll take you know, eight or nine days. 